Hello parents, my name is Ms. Gubaza. I am going to be the ELA and social studies teacher for 615 and 616 this year. This presentation for Back to School Night is going to focus a lot on virtual learning for the 2020 and 21 2021 school year. Um, but as we are all aware at this point, things change every other day. So um, this will be focused on virtual learning. Things are subject to change depending on whether we go back or whether we are extended in the virtual learning platform. So I want to make sure that I give you as much information today as possible. First, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Megan Gubaza. This is my fourth year teaching in general. It is my third year at Baldy. Uh, so far in my very short teaching career, I have, te I have taught high school seniors. I have taught a self-contained sixth grade class, which means that I have taught every subject at some point to sixth graders. I have taught seventh grade ELA, so at one point I was only teaching one subject, and now I am back to teaching multiple subjects. I am teaching sixth grade ELA and social studies. So my main focus, especially within the classroom, is helping the students learn through creating a love of reading, speaking, listening, and thinking deeply. I think that there is not a lot of learning that can happen unless the students are enjoying what it is that they are doing. And with that being said, I am always open to them letting me know how um, the ways that they have learned in the past, the ways that uh, other teachers have taught, all of that kind of stuff. I think it's really important to get them to be thinking about their own thought processes and what it is that makes learning fun and exciting for them specifically. So as far as my expectations specifically within my classroom, I'm sure that if you ask your students, they will already be able to tell you these four words. But every day in class, I make sure to highlight the actions of respect, support, educate, and grow. So in this class, we will learn to and continually respect each other. We will always support each other. We will always educate ourselves and the people around us. And we will always uh, emphasize the importance of growing from our mistakes and from our mis experiences with or in and outside of the classroom. So not only did I want to make sure that the students understand what those words mean to me, but I also wanted them to get the opportunity to understand them for themselves. So we actually made our own classroom poster by defining what those words mean to us and kind of creating class-wide definitions of those words. We read these every single day before we start every class period, and I think it's really important for them to understand the importance of each one of these words for them. Um, as I've said to them before, these words and these definitions, not the words, but the definitions can change. Uh, today, one of my students decided that it would be important for us to change a specific way that one of the definitions was written. So these definitions can change with us as we continue to change throughout the school year. So this is for 615. 615 made this um, poster together and then 616 made this poster. So if you notice they are different, they do have a little bit of similarities because obviously everybody understands what respect should mean in general, but um, they also have their differences, which really highlights the differences of each one of the classes that I teach so far. So I wanted to give you a very basic year at a glance um, just because I don't want to inundate your mind with a bunch of different information and all of that stuff. Um, because reading and writing, we are going to be highlighting a lot of the same ideas uh, continuously. I wanted to make sure that you just understand the basic ideas that we're covering in a lot of our different um, assignments and readings. So we're always going to be analyzing text. We are always going to be including evidence when we analyze text. And that's something that I think is really important for the kids to see. Uh, we're going to talk about main idea, theme, point of view, argument, diverse media, and literary elements. So these are things that we are going to be continuously talking about throughout the year. So when I say year at a glance, I don't mean the first thing we're gonna talk about all in the beginning of the year is text analysis. Year at a glance is just kind of, for me, we are going to be talking about these different themes throughout the entire year. For writing, we're going to be pretty much doing the exact same thing, except we're gonna have specific writing assignments throughout the year. So first is text dependent analysis. We do that again, all the time. So um, it could be as simple as answering one question and giving me text evidence, or it could be a five paragraph essay, which they will learn to write um, this year. Um, informative, explanatory, narrative, which is a mode writing, so it's creative. 
uh, argumentative, conducting research and informal writing. One of their first projects in social studies, they're going to be conducting some research. So again, a lot of these things are going to be um, brought up and talked about throughout the year, not just at specific times. And also just another piece of information, um, this right here is a link. So I'm actually going to link you to the year at a glance document that I use to make sure that I'm teaching all of the things that every other student in the district is learning. So um, after I after you see this video at back to school night on the date of back to school night, I will allow I will not allow I will um, share these slides with you on class dojo so that you can look at those different links. And then for social studies for a year at a glance, we're going to be talking about geography a lot and we're also going to be talking about culture. So um, to give you some idea as to what we're doing now, right now we're talking about the basics of geography. We just we defined what geography is. We talked about the five different themes. But as we go forward, we're going to be talking about our own local geography, the geography of Africa, the ge geography of Asia, um, and a lot of those different very basic ideas like landforms and things like that. We're also going to talk about culture. We're going to talk about our own personal culture, and then we're going to um, take a look at some of the, the international cultures around the world. So those are definitely going to be some interesting topics for the students to discuss. So um, for my grading, uh, obviously these things are subject to change as we know that everything is subject to change. Flex work will be assigned on Mondays for the entire week. Um, and then second assignments may, de may be added depending on how quickly the class moves through some of the work that I give. Um, grading percentages, um, so these are obviously subject to change. But we definitely do a lot of classwork. We do SLSO, we do notes, and we do chats. We also have discussions, and a lot of the students take opportunities to participate by raising their hand or asking questions or answering questions. And then some of the flex work, I'm always going to give a choice board. So they're going to get a choice board with four different activities or more, and they have to choose two or three or whatever the case may be in that situation. I'm also going to have Common Lit be in, involved in that, Achieve 3000. But at some points, I will also be creating my own assignments for them. Um, so the grading percentages continued. Classwork is 20%, flex work is 10%, projects are 30%, and tests and assessments are 40%. Again, that might be subject to change. Uh, I'm just going off what I know right now. Flexibility, I am very, very flexible. I am 100% understanding of all different issues that students are having through the virtual learning platform. So I am very, very flexible. As long as I am told before the due date of an assignment of any issues with connection or issues with personal, personal things, like I had to watch a sibling this day, I am 100% open to giving extensions for flex work and um, sometimes even for classwork. So for attendance, all students are required to log on for every live session. I take attendance at the beginning of every session, which would mean 8, 11 a.m., 8, 30 a.m., 10 a.m., and 1, and 1 p.m., depending on which section your student has. Um, so if they are not there at that point, uh, if present at the time that I take attendance, they are marked absent. If they show up late, I will change the absence to a tardy so that it shows that they were actually there. Um, I don't do that unless they show up 30, 40 minutes late. If they show up three minutes late, they are marked as present. So that's not something that you need to worry about. If a student is present on screen but does not make themselves known either verbally or through the chat, I will make sure that I contact parents to make sure that the absence um, is issued in a way that actually the student was not there. So if I contact a parent and you, one of you tells me that there was connection issues after the fact, I will make sure to change that attendance pol or that attendance to um, excused absence in that situation. Going a little further, a little further on that regard, I'm very aware of the fact that connection issues are possible. Um, I've had these issues myself. I'm open to being flexible with attendance if a student or parent informs me that there are connection issues or other issues, like I said, personal issues where maybe you have to spend some time watching a sibling or something like that. Um, these contacts must be made either before or during the live sessions so that I can make sure that attendance is submitted on time. So if I'm told a week after, I can go in and change the attendance, but I want to make sure that attendance stays accurate because sometimes it is a little bit difficult to change things in the system. Um, these are just, just some terms to know. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because these have been shared before, but um, just 
Infinite Campus and Gradebook, the students are very aware of what they're using. They know everything about Google Classroom at this point. They know pretty much everything they need to know about Gradebook and Infinite Campus. A lot of kids are already checking their attendance and all that stuff. So they should be pretty well informed with this. Um, if you are having issue, please reach out to me and let me know, or you can even ask your student and I'm sure they'd be able to help you as well. Again, this information is just going to be helpful after I share the slides with you. Uh, you can click on this video and it will help you get into the portal to access Google Classroom. Again, just some terms to know. Um, live session means that we are actually directly face to face. Uh, we are engaged in working together or with classmates. So I do breakout rooms pretty often. In regard to breakout rooms, I am not always able to be within each one of the breakout rooms, but I really try to be moving throughout them to see that I can get to everybody. Um, if there are situations that occur inside breakout rooms, I am, and I am not there for that, I rely on the students to let me know, or even if you want to be vigilant of the things that happen in breakout rooms, please let me know. I will make sure to do as much as I can to alleviate those issues. But for right now, my students have been really excited about breakout rooms and they've really worked very well in them. Again, Flex, uh, I talked about this specifically when it comes to my own work, but um, they can be doing, they can be watching videos, they can be responding to questions, they can be doing writing assignments, um, they can be doing virtual math activities, whatever the case may be. Flex work is always gonna be something that they should be able to do on their own. And I will always make sure to explain the information and the flex work before they, I ask them to do it themselves. Um, this is the student's schedule. They log on every morning at 8, 11. Um, they have a, their first class from, oh, this is the half day schedule. Well, yes, every day, every Friday they have a half day. Um, so they log in at 8, 11 and they will be done at 12, 15 for that schedule. I'm gonna make sure that I include the regular schedule because that would obviously make sense. All right, I am glad that happened because it gets you to understand that I am not always perfect and I make sure that my students know that as well. So um, just for the regular schedule, they log on at 8.11, they have a content block from 8.30 to 10, and they usually have those flex times. So if you would like to, you can review that schedule on your own time when I give you the slides. So I really appreciate having open communication with all parents. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you're not connected on Dojo, here are each one of the links for each of the sections. So again, when I give you these slides, you can do that. Uh, my email is mgubiza, M-G-U-B-I-C-Z-A at phillasd.org. If you ever want to have a phone or a video conference with me, please make sure that you email me and ask for that and I will be happy to set one up for you. Um, I'm very happy to have video conferences. I think that that's a really good feature of the virtual learning platform. And then finally, um, this is just some other uh, contact information. If you want to contact the principals, Ms. Bragg is our sixth grade principal. Ms. Cummings is our sixth grade counselor. We have the deans. Um, we have the special education liaisons. We have our ESL teachers. Um, we have our learning support teachers. So this is all information that you can use if you need to do that. I just want to end by giving some shout outs just because this group of students, both 615 and 616, have been so incredibly wonderful. Um, being a teacher, I was nervous about how this was going to go, and every day they make me realize that this is something that um, over these difficult times they are doing an incredible job of being resilient and still um, focusing on their learning and getting better and growing. So just some shout outs. We've had incredibly consistent attendance. Um, I have at least 90% of my students every single day for every single class period. Excellent participation. They are always raising their hands. They're always asking if they can go or if they can add something. And it's really great to see. Um, amazing engagement. When I put them in those breakout groups, it's hard to sometimes be like, I can trust you to do that. But I have always or I have not had a single problem with trusting them to get the work done. Um, impressive analysis, their thoughts and the things that they say about certain texts and stuff like that have been so impressive. And um, lastly, admirable kindness. They have been so sweet to each other, so supportive to each other. Um, we've all had days where it's been, where things have been tough and um, they're all open about those days and they definitely come together and support each other. So overall, this has been a great experience for me. I hope it's been a great experience for your student and I'm so, so excited to see what the rest of the year brings. So thank you very much, and I hope um, you have a great day. <laughs>